Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern Ned Reynolds back in the studio. Thank God it's Friday. So the NCAA came down kind of hard on Louisville, didn't they? That's the whole absurdity of the whole situation. They did not. And there, there's the key. Uh, this is a 17, it started in 2017, so it's a five-year FBI investigation of indiscretions by colleges around the country. And Louisville, one of them, Kansas, one of them, LSU, uh, Auburn, one of them. These are all involving basketball and illegalities by major companies, specifically in this case, Adidas. Now, keep in mind, and you have to make this little addendum here to the whole argument, it is legal now. But it was not back then when this whole investigation began to take place. It has resulted so far in the arrest of 10 people, the firing of several coaches, and several executives from Adidas for giving illegal contributions to colleges. (laughs) But what happened to the colleges? Well, in the case of Louisville, how about a two-year probation and a very small fine and some restrictions in recruiting, and that's it. That is nothing more than a feathery little touch to the wrist. Don't do that again. This is after a five-year FBI investigation. And what does Kansas do? Well, the NCAA hasn't even ruled on them yet, but the university suspends the coach for four games. The NCAA is toothless. They they won't do anything now because they're in a transitionary period. And how this is going to end up, I don't know. But it's going to be the power conferences or the power colleges and the conferences forming their own judicial branch and making their own laws. That's what I see maybe 10, 15 years from now. But right now, the NCAA, these these should be colleges that are on probation without being able to play in postseason competition. But no, 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 they're they're getting off scot-free. Too too much money, buddy. And the, the illegality is this. The argument is, well, we didn't find any evidence that the players were being paid, just that they were getting the free shoes and all this. Balderdash. Come on, people. But, hey, that's the way it is. It's the way it's going to work out. And Louisville gets a two-year probation and a very small fine. You know, it's funny you say they're not getting paid. When was the last time you went and bought some really nice new Adidas, my <laughs> friend? That's about as much as my paycheck right there. All right, so it could be arguably the greatest football game this season. Georgia and Tennessee tomorrow afternoon, sir. I don't think anything else is going on this weekend, is it? Oh, quite the contrary. <laughs> there are some pretty good I know, games. I kid, I kid. K-State's playing. K-State in Texas mm-hmm. is a big, mm-hmm. big, big game. But not just the Tennessee-Georgia game, which will be in Athens, Georgia. And interestingly enough, Tennessee, which is a very fine football team, is an eight-point dog in this one. Good gracious. And yet Georgia's number three in the country. Go figure. Alabama LSU. At, uh, at Death Valley in Baton Rouge, that's what they call Tiger Stadium down there, Death Valley. There are several Death Valleys in the country, but this is one of them. <clears throat> Alabama goes there, and Alabama, folks, is a double-digit favorite going into this one. Here is another trap game, if there ever was one, <clears throat> and that is the Clemson-Notre Dame game in South Bend. Clemson's the number four-rated bowl, and this is the bowl ratings now, the number four-rated team in the country. They go to Notre Dame. Notre Dame's not even in the top 25. Watch out. Yes, Clemson's favored. They know what happened two years ago when they went there. Mm -hmm. Notre Dame beat them in overtime. Kentucky and Missouri, they play up in Columbia. Liberty from Lynchburg, Virginia, which is now a third year, I think, third year Division I teams playing Arkansas down in Fayetteville. The Bears, of course, are in South Dakota. So we should see some very interesting college football games tomorrow. And uh, we got some really good high school football happening tonight, too, This is we? the uh, second round now of the district play. The di- district play has three rounds, and once you get to the championship next week, then you're into the state quarterfinals, semifinals, and championship run. So the march is continuing. Big games coming up tonight, especially in Class 2. As far as Class 6 is concerned, we have one team remaining. That's the largest class in Missouri. And that Class 6 team in the area is Nixa. Nixa will play Raymore Peculiar. There are no Springfield teams involved now. They all have been knocked out of the playoffs. But a lot of area teams and should be some really good football. Look forward to seeing it all night, tomorrow, and on Sunday. So it's football weekend for me, big time. So in game three, Ned stayed home. 
played his crossword puzzle. <laughs> Phillies hit a home run every five minutes. Game four, Ned's like, you know what? <clears throat> I'm feeling good. I'm going to go to the bar. Shut out. Second no-hitter in, in history. No-hitter, yeah. <laughs> game five. I told you yesterday, I was like, dude, you better sit your butt at home. And what did Ned do? Well, by the score, you went out to the bar, didn't you? At, just, uh, at the start, I didn't see the, the game at the bar. I saw that at home. And uh, it was, I'll tell you, Mike, that's the fascinating and, and to me, the alluring factor of baseball is that it's, it's a game of inches. Anything can happen. And there is no predictability. For instance, you're not running into the line or throwing a flat pass to somebody in a bubble screen mm-hmm. getting set up. This is different because a lot of it depends on the gods watching down. Philadelphia had their chances to win last night. Did not do so. Houston gets the win 3-2. Verlander pitched, I thought, very well. I thought they took him out too early, but that's what they do these days. Might need him. <laughs> well, not the season's about to end. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but, but over and above that, their whole pitching staff did well. Still, Philadelphia in the ninth inning, JT Riamuto hits a tremendous shot into right center field. Kid makes the catch up against the wall, bangs into the wall, falls to the ground, makes the catch. Okay, that took away. Eighth inning, Philadelphia has a big rally. Here's Schwarber that hits a laser shot. And the first baseman, who normally wouldn't be there, holding the runner on, was there. Makes the stab at it, makes the catch. Hey, it's a game of inches. Mm-hmm. And a couple weeks ago, those hits would have gone through. They didn't last night. That's the way baseball works. Now, you have to have good athletes out there playing, of course. But bottom line is, it was not in the stars for Philadelphia to win. But uh, nonetheless, uh, a 3-2 win for Houston puts the Astros up. Now all they need is one game, and that'll be... That one game may be tomorrow night, it may be Sunday night. Depends on what the circumstances are. Well, I kept saying it and feeling it last night. If Philly didn't win uh, that game, it would be next to impossible I for really them to win. And that's the way most people felt, yeah. too, was that was the pivotal game. Whoever got the upper hand in that one would be the eventual champion. And I think Houston will. And Houston, in all honesty, in my opinion, is the better team. Well, let's go back to uh, the no-hitter. You think they should have pulled him? I wouldn't have, no. It does not. That no-hitter might, yes, it goes in the books as a no-no, the second in World Series history, but it does not resonate with me. I go back to 1956. I was a sophomore, I think freshman or sophomore in high school, and when Don Larson pitched his no-hitter for the New York Yankees, remember it very well, and the great celebration, the first not only no-hitter, but perfect game. He didn't walk anybody. Nobody got on base. Zero. Brooklyn Dodgers were completely stymied by Larson and the New York Yankees. Just a little factoid here. The interesting thing about it was Larson came over to the well, with the Baltimore Orioles when they were the St. Louis Browns. Mm-hmm. He was a Brown. He went to Baltimore. His first year in Baltimore was two years before that, 1954. His record was 2-25. and 25. Oh, Jesus. They were a terrible team. Two wins and 25 losses, I think, was his record. Comes back and throws a no-hitter uh, two years later for the Yankees. All right, Larson's no-hitter. This one doesn't resonate with me because of the nature of the way pitchers are handled now. Mm-hmm. You don't throw complete games anymore. It does not happen. For some reason, the theory is, oh, we've got to take him out of the sixth or seventh inning and bring in our relief pitchers who are trained for that. I understand the thinking behind it. But still, I think it takes away from the magic of the game, the lore of the game. So, no, that no-hitter doesn't resonate, but it does go in the books. Yeah, well, like I said, I think I'm on your side on this one. You just leave that guy in, let him make history. So, Kansas City Chiefs, after a bye week, are back in prime time Sunday night. Ned Talk, 5 o'clock. It is indeed. We will start our pre-pregame show, which is euphemistically known as Ned Talk. And that'll start at 5 o'clock on Sunday, run from 5 to 6. Then uh, the Chiefs pregame show comes on 6 to 7, and then the Chiefs and the Tennessee Titans. And the Chiefs are a 12-and-a-half point favorite going into this one. I thought that changed if uh, Tannehill was starting. Well, that, they're not sure of that yet. They're still not sure. Okay, But right now, 12-and-a-half points, and that's a lot. That's a, that's a pretty good margin. Case in point was Philadelphia-Houston in football last night, the Philadelphia Eagles were 13 and a half point favorites. I advised my constituents, take the points. And sure enough, it was less than that. It was 12. It was 29 to 17. So you you take a look at circumstances like that, and when you're playing the points, it's a guessing game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I'm 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 looking for a low well, I had a conversation about that last night at the bar with someone and I 
I guess we'll have a low scoring game on Sunday night. I have a feeling. I don't think it's going to be a shootout. How many how many Chiefs games have been this year? You had that opener with the Arizona Cardinals, and then you had when the Chiefs have to score, they will. They will. But when they don't, they play they conservative. Don't, yeah, they don't really need to. Ned, you have a great weekend, and I will see you Monday.